Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. By BlackRifleCoffee.com Wow, James. This is new new low or new high? You tell me. What? Right before we went on camera, because again, we have a video show. Subscribe to the video on YouTube. You stuffed half a granola bar in your mouth and said... I'm ready. Pretty much a whole one. Yeah. From our children's snack. S- snack den. Bucket. It's a den. I like to I like to consider it a den. It happens. If you're eating Cheez-Its as an adult, Oof. it's because you stole them Oof. from your children. I get it, though. I I'm just get telling it. you. Having a box of Cheez-Its, oh. white cheddar in your house, at any point in your life oh. is dangerous. and Because they're not going to last more than... 48 hours right like let's face it you, you would need liam neeson to come and find the the fucking cheese it's or else that box is gonna gonna die it feels like you're distracting me from the real story of michael Arenthal. no <laughs> michael motherfucking jackson yep Oof. it feels like you're Oof. trying to distract me that was a tough one last night that was a, that was a, wow that was i hard mean to watch. you were you were really uncomfortable and a little bit surprised. Were you not? Yes. I, I, w- I was very surprised. I was not. But and yeah. we've talked about this for the last few months on this show saying, hey, it's coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out. I didn't think it was coming out this fast. I looked at you this week and I was like, yo, this is coming out, you know, Sunday. Yeah. BBC has already canceled Michael Jackson, essentially. They've, they've taken off all of his music on the BBC. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I got I got to lean towards that now. Yeah. And, and I'll be honest, like yeah. my we have, we have a 4-year-old child. He watches YouTube, he, you know. Him and his buddies like to watch YouTube on TV. Everybody does. Yeah, kid-wise, right? It is essentially re- replaced cable. I mean, we don't ch- children don't ask to watch like Saturday morning cartoons or or things like no. that anymore. It is pretty much just like, "Hey, can you throw on YouTube? Let's watch some Titus, yeah. some Dude Perfect, which I get down on." Love and dude perfect videos music videos taylor swift michael jackson is big on youtube oh yeah it's big for children he's in everyone's sort of algorithm so you go to taylor swift after a while right it will go to michael jackson sure. right pretty much anything pop that you pick and will we'll lead and you, you to you michael just jackson let it go yeah. it will ultimately lead you to michael jackson right and you know for the audience at home we weren't parents who said hey here's michael jackson fucking listen to it you know we weren't i think uh we were watching we were doing some some research for the show i know exactly when it was i was doing some research for the show i was talking about the queen movie and i rewatched uh live aid okay the live aid performance on youtube okay which is fantastic by the way um really? and they don't have any you know curse words or any of that that shit in there no so I sat down and uh, my son was in the room and I, I popped it on and we watched. It's about what twenty five minutes, would you say? Yeah, it's long. It's long. And uh, I got up. The phone rang. I, I got up to, to talk to somebody outside the room. And when I came back on, the live aid had ended and then it went into Thriller by Michael Jackson. And I'm assuming, algorithm wise, you're looking at the two biggest things there is. Did you just burp right in the microphone? I don't know. Did you hear it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I definitely did. I was trying to do an internal one. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, where definitely. it just sort of stays in the throat. Sure, sure. Um, but the thriller came on afterwards, and like, thriller was, uh, that's about, what, 12 minutes, somewhere in there? Sure. In, in that, that neighborhood. Right after Live Aid, and you would have to think, you know, me personally, like, trying to guess the algorithm, you would have to think, all right, Live Aid was probably... The, the best live performance of all time captured on film. Uh, a lot of people said that, again, that's why Bohemian Rhapsody probably did so well. Everybody talks about the last 10 minutes of that movie where they're just right. like, all right, they're just doing Live Aid all over again. Mm-hmm. In that same yeah. regard, I think Thriller is probably the most famous music video of all time. Yeah. 
Um, I, I still can't think of one that really beats it. So I algorithm wise, I know what it is. Sure. By the time I got off the phone, uh, came back in the room, Thriller was on, you know, he's like, dad, don't turn it. This is awesome. And I was just like, oh shit. I remember seeing this as a kid and we watched it. And then, you know, another Michael Jackson song came on, really didn't think too much about it. Um, but he was asking for Michael Jackson shit. After watching this documentary, I, I have a hard time as a parent saying, hey, it's okay to watch Michael Jackson anymore. Yep. That Again, documentary I, last night was so graphic and in, in such graphic detail. I, I don't see a way. And a pattern. I, and it just, as I knew it would, you see pictures. We've seen these pictures of him or videos of him walking with children, right. always having a nine to 10 year old companion. Right. Traveling with him, not his son, not his family, and not the children's family. Yeah. Not the child's family, right? So we've always seen these things. So you have these images of Michael Jackson with children. All this sort of does, this documentary, is open your eyes, right? Yeah. And show you these same pictures in a different way and really just shove them in your face and say, Listen, this is what it is. And anyone who wants to sleep in a bed, we now know, right? Back then, I don't know how, how aware we were of the amount of pedophiles in the world. So now we know... That if a grown man wants to sleep with your 10-year-old child in their bed, it's not, a, it's not a wholesome thing. Right. We know that now. Um, I, 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 look, I would wager to say we knew it then. It, it wasn't that long ago. It's just the power of him. And he was really skilled. So uh, a documentary came out right before this called Abducted in Plain Sight that everyone was talking about. Right. Where... It really breaks down how predators gain the trust of the parents and act like they're more friends than they are with the kids and the way that they infiltrate the family, break them apart, and then go after the child. So what we learned from that documentary right before it was exactly what Michael Jackson was doing with these families. So we targeted... You know, a, a middle class, lower in, lower in class, working class yeah. people yeah. Um, showed them the world, uh, talk, called and would talk to the mom a lot, right? as well as the kid gained trust. And after he gained the trust, would start grooming the child until they were too old for him. Right. And he would move on. To, a, to the next Younger generation. Child. And it was one after the other after the other. And again, I've, I've always said this about him, where I'm just like, you guys, stop. It's just like a worship thing. Like people are so blinded by the majesty of Michael Jackson. A, he's not that great. B, he steals music. And C, he's fucking touching kids. For years. All right. And he, look, he went on Open trial. Open your eyes. I know. He actually went on trial. And that's he, how he powerful he was. He beat it. Yeah. That's how powerful he was. Even these kids, even these guys in the documentaries are saying, I just wanted him to, to like me. And when we weren't like doing sexual things, I felt like he didn't want to be with me. Right. And they were needing it. And they were still, they were groomed to to um to want this from him and one of them said if you know i knew that if we spent the night and he and we did something sexually then i'm back in his sort of circle i'm back in the good graces right and um and so even with that trial i think they were still young enough you know like this wade guy was still 20s i think wade robson you're talking about yeah it was yeah. in his 20s yeah. So he was still under sort of this spell that if he did this for Michael, right? If he testified for him, that he would be back in there, right? Well, I, I have or a that he was still under. Yeah, I, I have a couple. Or he was paid. I, I don't yeah, know. I have a couple different opinions on that. 
Um, so the gist of, of last night's talk, it was two victims. Wade Robson, who was a dancer, had a show on MTV, uh, was, was allegedly yeah. the one who broke up Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake because he was her choreographer and then ended up hooking up with her while Justin was on tour. Okay. That was always the rumor. I, don't, I can't confirm that one at all. Right. Right. Uh, then the other kid who was in the, that infamous, what, Pepsi commercial? Yeah. So James Safechuck was the other guy. Safechuck, yep. Yeah. And when you watch this documentary, I, not only is it believable, I, I mean, they describe in every single, yeah, Just credible. Really, it's hard. It'd be, it, it would be hard to lie like that for that long about all of that shit. And they're essentially describing the exact same stories. For the two pattern. different, the yeah, pattern. for two different families, Wade Robson, I, I've met, I don't know, we talked about this last night, four or five times in real life. Okay. Uh, he's not that guy. Like, he's an extremely nice dude. Um, I, I didn't know any of that shit when I met him at all. I didn't know anything about the, he was, uh, you know, molested by Michael Jackson or anything. Like, he, di- he didn't openly talk about it. He didn't, nobody really knew. So I, I find him as extremely credible because it's, it's just not that dude. Like, you know, you've always got these weird people in Hollywood and shit where you're just yes. like, all right, cool. He's not a Corey Feldman where... where Yeah, if you listen to Corey Feldman speak, you're, you're just, you're just like, like, man... I don't know what happened to you, you yeah. fucking weirdo. Was it drugs? Was it what, like, yeah, like, what happened what to you? Re- you're, you're just like, what really happened? With Corey Feldman, you're almost, you were asking for it, right? Right, right. And... Uh, Wade Robson had a, a dance show on MTV around the same time I was over there okay. um, for my show. So I saw him. I passed him a lot, but I didn't, really, I didn't really chat with him. Again, nothing out of the ordinary doesn't seem like the type of dude who would be doing this for publicity or money. And he didn't get, I, I, to my knowledge. Now, now, here's where I could be wrong, and this, this where my, is where my first opinion comes in. To my knowledge, he didn't get money. Because he came back and testified later that said, I did not get touched by Michael Jackson, and none of this happened. Was that the Jackson family paying him off? Possibly. Um, really possibly. Something, something was happening. I, I heard there was 26 payouts uh, to children um, and, and their families over the years for various sexual acts that had gone on or, or may or may not have gone on, mm-hmm. right? Was Wade Robson one of them? It would be the question of why uh, of hey we'll give you this money but you've got to come out and say michael jackson did nothing to you and a lot of these suits these lawsuits that is part of the deal right. um it, it, you know even if you're a fucking bank robber you can go in and plead certain things that to say hey i'm waving my no contest i'm not i'm not i'm not saying i'm guilty but i'm saying no contest or whatever it is like legally there's ways around you taking money or taking a deal and things that you have to do. Sure. Uh, so, so did he get paid off and then come out and say that shit? Maybe. The second one is this. He initially sued the Jackson family for a fuck ton of money. Yep. It was something crazy, like a billion dollars or something, yeah. right? Didn't work, right? No, it didn't work. Yeah. And the problem is you go up against a legal team like Michael Jackson's for years and years. You are f- fucked. Financially, you cannot fight that. That is too much coming at you. That you either eventually have to drop the suit or settle. And the suit went away. I don't know whether that was on his side or whether that was on their side that paid him off. Either way, I can personally say I've met this human in real life and he does not seem like that type of guy whatsoever. And when you come out and tell the public in the world what had happened to you with Michael Jackson, it's kind of over at that point. Like that's what I thought about watching this last night is... I knew this dude. You know, he was a dancer mm-hmm. and all this other shit. Now he's going to be known as the guy who got touched by Michael Jackson and did this documentary, and that's it. I don't, I don't know what redemption Wade Robson is going to have, uh, career-wise. That's going to get him past this of the guy who was molested by Michael Jackson. Yeah, I mean, they say they both kind of may have book deals happening after this. Sure. Um, so as far as compensation, so they're not being paid for the documentary, but you know, the family alleges that they're going to get book deals and make all this money 
after the documentary comes out. I don't believe that. I mean, you, you'll have a book deal, right? But you you're will. Not, you're not going to make money on all these appearances. If they wanted to do that, they could have Corey Feldman it this right. whole time. Right. So really the point, I mean, I find them totally credible. I believe all of it because I have known it for years and I think everyone else has too. And like I said, it really is just shoving the pictures in your face, shoving in your face what you already know to be true. Because I do believe that deep down, we know that whole family is fucking weird as fuck. Yeah. From LaToya to fucking the weird ass brothers to the dad that beat him to where's the mom? I don't know. To Michael Jackson's just insanity. His entire career. Now, the mom is still alive. Okay. Cool. So I just don't. She's still alive, and she she actually filed a hundred million dollar lawsuit against HBO. Nice try. And I know that you want to believe that your son would never do this, or maybe you do believe, and you're just trying to save your money. I'm not sure, but I think it's just the end of all of us for some reason. Again, if I loved his music as much of a lo- as a lot of people do, yeah, I may understand how you could be so blinded. But because I hate his music or I'm just not yeah, that impressed by sure. it, I'm able to and have been able to see the weirdness. I've gotten a weird fucking vibe, creepy vibe from, from him forever. Yeah. Um, I, I think you were in the extreme minority of people who do, did not love, Absolutely. love Michael and Jackson. that's why he was able to get away with what he was doing Correct. for this long yeah. and continues to. Even the criticism of Well, he doesn't this, continue to because he's I don't, dead. I'm just saying, well, getting away with it. <laughs> getting yeah, away yeah, with yeah, it, yeah, yeah, right? So yeah. it doesn't matter if you're alive or dead. It's, it's a matter of getting away with it. So he did get away with it his entire life. We'll give him that. But in death, he will. But it is, uh, it's split. So people are on both sides. Yeah, I went it's to... It's a pretty, what do you think, 50-50, 60-40? Uh, yeah, I went, I went to Twitter last night, and I, I, I would say it was 50-50. Yeah, and it, where people are defending him, these lies, we have to deal with these lies against the king of pop. I don't There under, you I don't, go, there's yeah, the problem. I don't understand it at all, because if you're watching this, there is no way, I, I, humanly possible, especially if you have kids, like there is no way humanly possible you watch this documentary and don't believe that these these kids and these parents are lying to this extent because it's not like they're not like white trash people or you know like oh man or no, like they're just again working normal class normal easily easily swept off their feet. I mean, shit, if someone came to my house with the limo every day and took me to amazing like Shopping Neverland trips. alone. Yeah. It, they were describing as heaven. On, I mean, it's a child's parents, everyone's just yeah. dream, yeah. right? So, and yeah, taken on shopping trips and, you know, you're staying, the mom's staying in the same presidential suite. So there should be no problem with me sleeping with your son in the next room. You're here. Right. Stuff like that. Right. You know, at a certain level of either, you know, education or, st- you know, awestruck starstruck easily uh you know you can see how the moms got carried away the dads really weren't super into it no the moms no, got, I, mean, I, I mean one I, of the moms had to leave the dad and the whole family and go to la because the dad yeah. was like what are you fucking doing yeah right yeah it's it, it's a wild trip it's i mean i i was crazy but i was not expecting that because we, again, we've talked about what this for were a couple you months. Expecting, by the way, more of like a, kind of a gotcha, like you know, uh, what's that? The insider, you know, more of like, okay, and this, this happened. Really, and this and- happened. The way it was shot and the way it was done and thought out, like it reminded. I mean, look, it, it, it's great. By the way, like the documentary it's itself really documentary. is really well done, but. Just, I guess, the normalcy of these guys describing their experience and the parents, like like the normalcy of it, where usually you would expect a a cash me outside family where you're like, you know, all right, it's these fucking white trash people. I don't know what's going on or why they're, you know, Mm -hmm. doing it. I think uh, the other part I think is I think if you would have thrown Corey Feldman in this mix, 
it would have taken you taken right out of it, taken you out of this world mm-hmm. of believability by saying, all right, great. How many drugs has Corey Feldman done over the years and all this other fucking weird shit? Even and, Macaulay Culkin as well, normal as I find him actually surprisingly. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's still that level of, you know, he is an actor. You, you, I, I don't know. There's, there's something about not really knowing these guys other than this documentary. And also, I think they really took measures to cut out parts where they were crying and really emotional about it. And they made it very, um, I'm just telling you what happened. Sure. Because I think that, and Corey Feldman does this, where he gets really, he gets really emotional and it's sort of the Lady Gaga, like, yeah, yeah, fake yeah, yeah. tears. Yeah, and yeah. you just sort of, okay, um, you know. Well, like, let's hear what, like, but what really happened? So it seems like just, you know, they, they are thinking about it. They're introspective about it. It happened a long time ago and they've clearly gone through therapy and done everything they can do to be able to talk about it in this way. And I do think the director was, again, it, it seemed like a conscious effort, even for the moms. Right. Cause you could see they have tissues. Like they were crying. Yeah. They just weren't showing those really emotional parts of it and they were really c- trying to stick to facts right so yeah I think that was interesting the, yeah. the, the other thing that I, I found interesting last night was you know when it ends it says you know in a title card that pops up at the end this is macaulay culkin is denied any sexual abuse yeah. or, or allegations and that's his choice. forever it, it is well it, look you I can mean, look at that one of, but you can look at that one of two ways either it didn't happen to him possibly um, or, his mom and dad were very involved in his, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, if there's a mom or dad at all that's like, uh-uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're out of the group, but you you had your little time try, he, him trying to groom you. Sure. But, you know, it could be true in, in this, this, in the regard of he was doing Home Alone and all of that shit. Like, he was a massive movie star. If if Michael Too Jackson, public. yes, Too public. so if Michael Jackson crossed the line with Macaulay Culkin, Macaulay Culkin at that age, who's in Home Alone and mm-hmm. is just on fire in the world, mm-hmm. if he comes out and says, I got molested by Michael Jackson, I think Michael Jackson's world crumbles because everybody loved Macaulay Culkin at that time as yeah. a child. Yeah. Um, and, and I think those couldn't... allegations maybe he couldn't get away from. Uh, the other part about it that I, that I kept trying to reconcile was maybe maybe it was the fact that Macaulay Culkin didn't want to be known as the guy who got touched by Michael Jackson. And again, that's his choice. It is. And it's not, you know, I'm sure these guys don't hold it against him if something did happen or the other guy. um, Hold it against Macaulay Culkin. Yes, because it is his choice. It's everybody's choice to come out or not. And it's not up to anyone else. Even them mentioning that was a bit I I found uncomfortable because it's not up to you know it's up to Macaulay Culkin to come out if he wants to so they did say he said nothing happened but they framed it a little bit like something did I don't really like that right yeah because again I don't know what's a little <sighs> something on Culkin that he now has to deal with that it is his choice to it, want to it, exactly with. like I don't you know it, it's been a rumor for years but Sure, if he doesn't want to be a part of it a couple it. times, but yeah. he's like, no. And you know, I believe him only because I don't know if his parents could be wined and dined. They Maybe were not. rich as shit. They were rich as fuck, and all those kids were making money. And they were on a trajectory that they didn't need Michael Jackson to help them. The no. kids that really were groomed for that amount of time needed Michael Jackson for their career. So they right. wanted to be dancers. They wanted to be in the entertainment field, like in that way. So. There was a couple different elements with those kid, those two boys in particular that made it easy for him to, you know, again, wine and dine the parents, gain trust, say that I'm taking him on tour because, you know, he wants this will help his career and I'll take care of him. And so those everything has to kind of fall in place. And I think probably with Macaulay Culkin, it didn't. Yeah. He didn't want to go on tour. I mean, I'm sure. And again, if you have one ounce of sense in your brain as a mom you're not gonna let it happen sure so i'm sure he tried with many boys 
uh, more than that. And there had to be a moment, hopefully, a couple of the moms that were like, no. Yeah. You're not sleeping in the fucking room with my kid. Yeah. Um, and then they were obviously ousted. Right. Right. Michael Jackson would never call them again. And the kids were probably so pissed at the mom and all of this. But look, we'll find out that last night was part one. This tonight is part two. Anyway, right? Don't get me started on Michael Jackson. Yeah. Beat it. Uh, 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 beat it. Uh, 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 beat it. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. I think after last night, though, uh, I'm definitely all done with Michael Jackson. Um, you got to be all done. Yeah. And you got he's just such a fucking creep. Yeah. The whole family's fucking creepy. You changed your skin color. Your nose was falling off. <laughs> You're jumping on cars after fucking winning. A pedophile case. A pedophile case. Uh-huh. Like, no, I mean, but I don't, I don't know. It's just like, he's just childlike, you know? <laughs> he just wanted to be in the bed with another child because he just like missed his childhood. You guys are fucking retarded. All of you. Because <laughs> you know you were like, no, well, I don't know. <laughs> You're culpable. <laughs> You're putting everybody on trial today, Look, Dave. Dude, you know everybody did. The yeah. only reason R. Kelly fucking got caught is because he wasn't putting out hits anymore. Yeah. And the fucking veil got lifted and yeah. people were like, oh yeah, remember when he peed in that 14-year-old's mouth and we had video of it? <laughs> that was a long time ago, guys. That wasn't just a fucking week ago. Yeah, it was years ago. It was years ago. And Chappelle made it fun and cool and funny. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And That's so did true. all of we. Uh, look, all of us. So, but, but so did everybody for uh, Michael Jackson as well. You remember Amy Poehler playing Michael Jackson. Hey, I'm in the tree. It's oh. me. It's Michael. Like, oh, yeah. Creepy. Yeah. Everybody made fun of, of Michael for years and, and years and years and years. Made fun of him. Yeah. For, oh, how funny. Yeah. And with the kids. He'd always be with the kids, like in the skits. Yes. Right? Correct. So. So you're all to blame. All of you. All of you, because, and I will say this, I've got about eight people in my messages that agree with me. Eight. That are like, I hate his music. He's like, uh. But (laughs) eight only? No, I know. That are like, I'm I'm with you on this? Yeah. It's, uh, it'll be. It's gonna be be a lot more now. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see what people's reactions are to Michael Jackson after this. It's a shame it's on HBO because nobody's working getting HBO No, they, look, HBO's, all right, um, people are still getting HBO. We're not because we're on Dish, but, uh. So if you're on any other provider, you're still getting it. Yeah, you're good. It's just Dish. It's just Dish on that one. But they're, they're making a go of it. Um, uh, fuck, you know, it's strange to, to like HBO last night when we watched it. That was the first time we watched HBO in a long time. Yeah, I right? bought it specifically for this. And then this morning, we see an, an interview with Ben Affleck for his new movie, which I'm going to be honest. I, I remember seeing this, this trailer maybe four or five months ago, and it looks fucking great, by the way. So I'm not, I'm not shitting on, on the movie. Yeah, no, it looks good. I thought it was like a $120 million movie for like Warner Brothers. Turns out, as of this morning, it is not. It is Netflix. Mm-hmm. And I was like, God damn. Damn it. How was Netflix able to do this? The HBO thing is strange to me now because Netflix puts out so much content. I just don't flip to HBO that much where I'm like, eh, all right, cool. It would have to be something like this. Game of Thrones. Kind of, yeah. Um, Big Little Lies. I yeah. think it's coming back this summer, but it's not enough to even just remotely scratch the surface of Netflix. Like it, Netflix is putting out content at an astounding rate. That fucking Affleck movie blew my mind because it's like, cool, you're, so you're going to be in theaters for a week, I think it is, mm-hmm. and then just go straight to Netflix, which, I, look, everybody's going to wait to Netflix. Why would you go see it in theaters at that point? Exactly. Um, and when I looked at it, I was like, how do you have the money to spend 120 on a movie, just one movie that people are going to watch when it's like, you know, you're adding what four or five million subscribers here a year in the United States. I feel like everyone has Netflix at this point. How are you still making money, man? I don't get, I love it. I love Netflix. I love it too, but I don't get it. No ads. (laughs) How are you making money off of this? It's sort of like, again, I feel like. They raised the rates. So it's, what is it, 1499? Now it's the same price as HBO. But I sort of feel like the old Senator that's like asking, or the old like congressman that's asking uh, Zuckerberg how he right. makes money, right? Like, 
I just don't understand it, but well, fa- I'm sure fa- there's like an easy answer. Facebook just like, and YouTube. How do you make money? Yeah, Facebook and YouTube, I understand because you're monetizing it there's with ads. ads. You're not doing that with Netflix and you're, but I mean, I guess you're not paying for YouTube. It's it's the strangest thing to me. I don't know how they're going to keep it going, but I love it. And I'm amped to see that I'm Affleck here for movie. It while it's here, yeah, yeah. Spielberg came out and uh, launched into a fucking tirade saying, you know, all Netflix movies need to be disqualified from the, from the Oscars. A lot of backlash this morning over that, over those comments. Sim- Again, 50-50, though. A lot of even Ben Affleck when he was on with his balls cut off on the Today Show. Yeah. Um, was saying, I get it a little bit where, you know. Because he's a director. Yes. Yeah. So. And he, he's a great director. Ben Affleck is a great director. Yeah, but he also was like, for us, making the movie is no different. It isn't. You know? So yeah, it, it, it isn't. Whether it's going to Netflix, whether it's going to a theater, the way that we make it and the, the effort that we put into it and, and all of this is the same. Well, I think there's, so, there, there's something romantic still about sitting in a theater on opening night, watching something with, you know, 200 total strangers and either laughing or being surprised or shocked or, you know, saddened by, by, by something with strangers where you look around the theater at certain moments during a film and, you know, to see if everybody's either crying at the same point you're crying at or laughing at the same things you're laughing at. And, uh, I think Spielberg is obviously still in that world. And, you know, when he started it's in the 70s, school, yeah. yeah, I mean, that was it. And if you're a theater director, you were the fucking king. Um, yeah. And now he sees that it's over. Yeah. And, and even like Al- Alfonso Cuero, who won two Oscars for Roma or whatever. I tried to watch that, by the way. Good luck. Blah. Sorry. If that's not in black and white, I don't even know what kind of movie that is, to be honest with you. Um, but whatever. I, I didn't. I didn't get down on it. Um, I don't do black and white movies. I, I, I do. Like Good Night and Good Luck was great. Um, Clooney's movie with Ray Wise was, was really good. But um, uh, watching that, I was just like, all right, cool. That that deserved to be on Netflix. I was just, if I would have gone to see that in the theater, sure. I would have been pissed off about it. Sure. Or it's a limited release. Like it's something right. New York, LA. You right. go and see this artsy movie. That's how it's supposed to be. But even, even Alfonso Cuaron said, hey, no, this is the new world. And I would, I'll, I'd kill to make another movie with Netflix. And he's... That guy's won, what, four Oscars now at this point? Yeah. Even he is saying, and he's, he's an older guy. It's not, it's not like he's fucking 28. Uh, he's an older guy who is considered one of the top five directors that we have in the business right now. Mm-hmm. Even he's saying, yo, man, I'm, I love Netflix. I'm down to see it. Everybody got to see my movie around the world, which yeah. is true. Netflix yeah. is in, what, 140 countries or something like that? So that's the other side of it where, you know, if you're Spielberg and you're making a movie, Yes, United States is going to see it. Yes, China is going to see it in theaters. But how do you get it to the rest of these countries that, you know, I, I mean, yeah, France and, and England. And, or how do you get it to literally everyone in the U.S., right? Yeah. Um, bird box numbers, right? Yeah. Where everyone is sitting everyone, down yeah. and consuming it. And they, you know, family of four trying to get to the fucking movies. It's just not going to happen anymore. Sometimes it's like it depends on what it is. I was trying to think about what I'm looking forward to seeing in the theaters that's coming up Mm -hmm. um, after Spielberg's comments. And I was like, you know, for me, it's probably it's movies that I'm taking my kids to like Dumbo, um, The Lion King. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Just because I know they want to get out of the house and have a Saturday and go eat popcorn and candy and do do the whole thing Uh, to me. There was one other one for like me as an adult that I want to see that, that, you know, and it's probably the Jordan Peele movie us. Yeah. I want to see that opening night in a theater with total strangers and get in it. Um, But other than that, I like the superhero movies and all that other shit or a Spielberg movie. Like what? Yeah. But, but, but late lately, what's he been doing? You know, that that's, he put out the Meryl Streep movie with Tom Hanks that like, to me personally, that felt like a Netflix movie. That should have been on Netflix. Should have been. Because no one's going to the theater to see it. Correct. And, and I'm uh, sorry, buddy, but it's been like that for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, he had the Ready Player One, which didn't oh, do that, that right. great, but a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people didn't like the script and, you know, they were 
pissed about it because it didn't, it wasn't as good as the book and whatever. So, you know, you look at Spielberg's hits or lack thereof the last few years. I, I don't know. I mean, again, that, that, that Tom Hanks Meryl Street movie, The Post, that should have, that should have been a Netflix movie. Or an HBO. Actually, it should have been an HBO movie, like a Saturday night HBO movie, kind of like how they're doing with like Paterno. Uh, when who was uh, yeah, who was it? Yeah. yeah, your boy, yeah, uh, Pacino, Pacino. Um, with Pacino, like watching that Paterno movie, like that was fucking awesome, and it felt like great. This definitely felt like a Saturday night HBO movie. Yeah. Um. So you know the 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 big event pictures, I think, are the ones that are going to be eating up the screens theatrically. Where, you know, The Rock, you want to see The Rock, you know, punching a fucking earthquake or whatever that last movie was, San Andreas or, you know, the, the, or him jumping out of a helicopter yeah. 60 feet magically across to a building or things like that. Or sure, superhero if movies. you work out, you are like yeah, super. You can do anything you want. Yeah. Um, but I think that's what's kind of be going to kind of be left. I, Jordan Peele's kind of changed the game with these thriller social horror movies is they're not straight horror. They're not, Mm-mm. and they're more socially based on things. A little bit black mirror, a little bit like, yeah. Horror, um, just things thinkers. like that where you want to go opening night and be shocked. Uh, that's cool. A little Shyamalan stuff. Going yeah. On. Co- there is no more comedies that is dead. That yeah, we can just be studios are not making that. comedies yeah. whatsoever. I, I've only read about like two being bought to even be attempted to be made in the movies. One of them is that Rebel Wilson thing, and I think it already came out. Uh, Probably, yeah. No, it did. Remember already the, come the out. Hemsworth yeah, yeah. movie about? It did already come out. I didn't even hear one word about that. I mean, it's it sucks and it's strange, but that's why I moved out was to make you know comedies like that. They don't, and the only comedies that are getting made even at all right now. Are Saint, look, Sandler movies on Netflix? Netflix? Netflix. So the Spielberg thing feels a little bit like an old man on the porch. Yeah. Kind of telling and a lot you of, to and stop. And a lot of people and, have, um, have said that today. And so it is a little bit like that. Listen, I hear him. And we've been bitching about this. One of our first shows that we ever did, a lot of our first shows were like, it's dead. Hollywood's dead. Like the big movie's dead. Yes. Like we've been talking about it for how many years, two years now, now, right? Yeah. So um, at some point. By the point, way, this is, our, this is our two year anniversary. We've been on the, the, the air for two years at this point. So, oh my God. Yeah. Weird. Weird. But we were lamenting it back then. Yeah. And so at some point you have to, I think. I've sort of come to terms with it in a way of like, this is what it is. So you can either bitch about it right. with your fist up or you can say, okay, um, you know, Netflix is making amazing stuff and they're giving opportunities to people that are, you know, they're giving a bunch of money to new stories and new sure. stuff. And that's what we kind of always wanted, right? Right. No more reboots, no more Marvel, blah, blah, blah. So if Netflix is doing that, Good on you. We, yeah, we got to we gotta go with it. And, it, and again, the, it's, it's out of the bottle. It's done. Yeah. You can't, Steven, Steven Spielberg can't put it back in. No. And, and like I, we're, I, we're done. It's out. And, and if you look, um, if you look around, like really look around in, in your day-to-day life with the new things that they are promoting uh, on your phone or on your television or, or whatever your fucking device is for these new shows and new movies that are coming out, the tags at the end are always the most interesting to me where it's just like, oh, now that's going to be a thing. Uh, the new one was The Twilight Zone. Okay. So The Twilight Zone is Jordan Peele. All right. Is, is remaking uh, The Twilight Zone. But it's for CBS All Access. So you have to buy the app to watch this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, g- a good friend of, uh, of mine, uh, Michael Raymond James, who's been on the show. Mm-hmm. He's in a new series, and it was CBS All Access or whatever. I had never heard of it, you know. Um, I knew he was getting, getting paid some getting decent paid? cash. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Cool, man. Where's that going to end up?" And he was like, "Ah, it's it's a you know they're doing an app and it's fine, you know, whatever." And I was like, "Oh, all right." And then I like going back in my mind, I was like, "Wait a minute, that's the app I had to buy last year for March Madness." Okay. Because all the mm-hmm. CBS had owned the rights to that and whatever, and I was just like, "Oh, fuck. All right." Uh, is this going to be yet another $5 charge on my credit card per month? You know, like things like that. And, and that's what it's going to be going forward. 
Uh, Disney's app launches at the end of the year. Uh, they're going to make the exclusive content for that app and that app only, yeah. same as Netflix. And uh, look, Apple is is on it. Facebook Watch is trying to do it. Um, you know, Facebook is still not streamed into television yet, but uh, that's their, their their next new frontier. So Spielberg's comments on all of this are. He's losing a battle here that he can't win. He at can't this point. win, and and we understand it. And anyone that's in the industry in any capacity understands what he's saying. But we've already been trying to fight this, especially making independent films and wanting them to go to theaters right. and things. So we've been fighting Correct. this battle for how long? Five years. Yeah, and I mean, at, at a certain point, like I, with the last film, we gave up. Where it was just like, all right, th- this. No, what's the streaming? What are we doing? And and all that other shit. Um, because again, you're fighting a losing battle yeah. at that point. Like the the romantic idea of going to see a, a film in Had theaters and this, all of that shit is it's yeah. kind of gone. Kind of you know? gone, and it's it is sad. But again, we've been sad about it for yeah, it, a couple it, years. It was now. literally like if you go back in our show's history. I, I want to say it was in our first ten episodes. We just did a, a, a show called Hollywood is Dead. Yeah, and here's why. And, you know, the fact that all of this is coming to light now is shit we've seen for a long time. So, But I'm saying had, had Spielberg said something kind of in the beginning, yeah, it may have made a little bit of difference or people would have thought about things differently, but he's about five years too late and we're already on this. Like, we've already moved on. He's the old, old man yeah. that's like, wait a minute. And, and you're like, we're done. By dude. the way, one of his best friends and his contemporaries, Martin Scorsese, who, again, one of the greatest filmmakers he's of, of all it? time, he's, his next movie is a Netflix movie. It's Netflix. And it's so uh, he's the last one. It's called The Irishman. It's Pacino, De Niro, Pesci. I mean, you got. You know what the shitty thing is? Spielberg can't be on Netflix now. No, like he can't get on that train no, later because he he's he's put his his stake in the ground. And the strange thing is, is Spielberg has been in television for a long time, a long, long time. I mean, yeah. like all the way back to like Band of Brothers. Band of Brothers. Like um, he's he's done numerous numerous shows on uh, TNT. So it's not you know, I don't. He just cut that off. Yeah. I, no, no, on. no. Look, I mean, you're still in the HBO world, and the, you know, Spielberg's going to be fine. Let's not cry for Spielberg. But it's a Spielberg, streaming service. It so is. he's kind of going up against, he says Netflix, but he's saying any streaming service. Right. So, you know. And also, uh, just a quick reminder for everybody playing at home, you're down to five studios in Hollywood. Five. That's it. I think when I moved out, it was about eight to ten when I moved out there. Yeah. Um, you were now down to five. Five studios that are making theatrical films on a regular basis and it will be eventually down to two or three and it will be and then the rest of it will be streaming yes correct hulu or whatever yeah voodoo yeah cuckoo (laughs) and crackle (laughs) yeah i don't i don't know anybody who watches crackle Um, man we went off on a tirade here i we we, we have sponsors whoops yeah I I don't look. Think, I I talked to the sponsors. They'll take they it. said they don't They'll give a take shit. It. They said they don't give a shit. They were like, look, as long as it's set in the show, we're good. Um, first and foremost, BlackRifleCoffee.com had a nice cup today. James, you got a nice cup of it there. I did. Can't you tell? Yeah, uh, that's a that's a very nice Az- Aztec mug that you're drinking it's out of. It's very Roma. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we don't know because the, the mug's not this black and white. This is how Roma should have looked. <laughs> like the colors and things in Mexico, you, it's gorgeous. Let me ask you this. You, you edit the show, right? Sure. Can you put this, this last half of the show in black and white? On, yes. On, uh, <laughs> can you really? <laughs> yes. So at this time code, oh, mar- no. mark it now. We'll go from color to the rest for Roma. We'll do the the rest of the show in black and white. In for the video show. Okay. <laughs> do you love it? Here we are. See how ugly it looks. We're Netflix. But do you We're see how Netflix. ugly this looks? Like, just I don't like a mono. Chroma- you know what I mean? Maybe it is the one one eighth. Maybe it's the eighth Mexican that I am. But I love a. I love a vibrant color. color. Yeah. 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 
Especially uh, in film. Put so put the put the Roma treatment on this. Let's do the We've rest. We've already of this been episode. in Roma since you said it. In black and white. Good. Good. Um, this will be really hilarious. Again, subscribe to the show on YouTube. Uh, we really appreciate it. This, this, this will be really fucking funny. <laughs> Um, next up, uh, no, Black Rifle is 20% off Revolution promo code K Cups Bags. It's a veteran owned company. Sign up for their Coffee Club of the Month uh, program. I want to read this to you actually, because I talk about this shit all the time. Um, let me see here. Uh, what? I'm pulling up their email. Black Rifle? Yes, I'm pulling up their email. When they email you and ask if you want to Here it is. So you get, no, because you get one email a month for Black Rifle, right? And the email is from the Coffee Club of the Month that just says, hey, um, we're doing this whole fucking thing and blah, blah, blah. It's amazing, right? Yep. Um, They're they're giving away, they do these free contests once a month. Um, Last two months have been gun safes gigantic liberty safes that are like five grand a piece this new one this so i woke up this morning to this uh black rifle coffee company uh night with the golden knights um golden what? night in las vegas uh so you get you know vip tickets to the, the vegas golden knights in vegas uh, i want to go they're gonna throw they're gonna throw in two thousand to book your travel hotel uh flights everything for free that's it all, all you have to do is be a member of the what, club dude? Yes, they do this once a month. Um, could we win? Could, could <laughs> no, 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 we can't. All right, um, but that's amazing, right? Like, holy shit! I want to do that right now. So every month they do just one free giveaway that that you don't have to enter. So it's not like, oh, hey, you got to buy something or yeah. you've got to enter You'll something. Just, it'll or, just like pop up that you want. It just or says whatever. you're automatically yeah. in if you're in the club. If you're, you're in the in club, the coffee club, yeah. yeah. So uh, that, that's the type of shit that you do there, and, and I love it. Uh, next up is ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Love, love ghostbed.com. I, I want to I want to go crawl onto it right now. I know. We got some sheets coming, Javes. The cooling sheets are Yeesh. coming. Yeesh. Uh, they will be here real soon. Like a, a real soon. Ah, oh, swear. Yeah. Um, they get uh, pillows, uh, adjustable bases, seven ninety nine. Also, if you're military or first responder, take an extra fifteen percent off at the bottom of the page. Uh, that's a big savings there. And as always, thirty six months, no interest, pay as you go program. No one's doing that. No one. Uh, the mattress gets shipped to you in a box. Pull it out, pop it open. Fucking three hours later, you're good to go. Same with the adjustable base. No, no assembly required. You're good to go. Just plug that shit in and enjoy your life. I have to put lip stuff on if we're in black and white. Why? Because I'll just be a, a washed out Roma. Okay. I'll be a washed out little Mayan. Well, we'll find out what Jabe's looks like in black and white here. Uh, and you can find out how great the mattress is at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, big fan of that. Um, love, love those guys more than life itself. Next up, strikeforceenergy.com. Strikeforce Energy is the premier energy drink in the land. No carbs, no sugars, uh, no calories. You just pop it open, dude, squeeze it into your shit, and you're ready to go. Did you say pop it open, dude? Yeah, pop it open, dude. What? <laughs> That's all you do. Pop it open, dude. Okay. Squeeze it into your shit. You're, you're good to cool. go. You're like, cool. I don't know. Yeah. You're just like, cool. Like, whatever. I'm really cool, Jesse. Obviously. You're not. You're kind of a little idiot. <laughs> kind of a little idiot, I feel. Everyone knows that. Yeah. Uh, four amazing flavors. Lemon, original, grape, and orange. Uh, let's fucking do it. At StrikeForceEnergy.com. 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. Get on the Strike Force train. We have a subscription to this as well, man. I, we drink this shit all the time. Uh, go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. And they ship everywhere in the entire world. Last but not least, StraightRazors.com, Jabes. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. You rock it! Oh, man. I really tore through. Tell me something, boy. Yeah, that really tore through the, the area. Do you like it? 
it's a little shallow. A little yeah. shallow rake it for you. Yes. I, I not only rake it, I rub it. <laughs> I rub it. Oh. Um, uh, straightrazors.com has got the best shaving products for all of your life. All of your life. Everything that you do in your life as a man to look good in your life. Good in your life. That's what <laughs> you're doing to your face and your body. You are in control of your life. You're in control of your life as a man. Shave with what you want to shave with. Uh, they get straight razors, safety razors, uh, beard oil, shampoos, conditioners, you name it. Everybody's using that that's, uh, beard beard oil, that, that smolder. I get it, man. That's that's the aftershave that I use. There's something in that smell. Shit. I love it, dude. Um, pick up a bottle of the aftershave or the, the beard oil or, or the mustache wax. They get smolder in that, too. I don't know what scent that is, uh, but they've that's the best. That's the best I've ever used. I use it every day. Go to straightrazors.com and uh, with, with Pornhub Code Revolution for 20% off. It's a big savings there. It's a real fucking big savings there. So uh, I'm proud of them. Uh, and as always, when darkness falls, he doesn't catch it at night. She cries while he rides steed or on sale. Hardback, paperback, ebook, and uh, the audiobooks. Number one. Number one. Six and a half yeah. hours worth of magic. If you like the podcast, you will love that. And you will get to hear Jabe's. Speak in an Asian accent a lot. A lot, Javes. Uh, do you have a crime corner? Oh my gosh, I do. Have we ever gotten out of sponsors and just hopped into a crime corner? I don't think it's ever happened. No, before. I don't even know what to do with myself. Yeah. Crime corner, crime corner. Crime corner. I wonder how this is going to look in black and white. You doing a crime corner. Boring, just like every other fucking. Ah, uh, is it? Oh, maybe it'll be like, ooh. Yeah, add a little like mystery. An old, like an old crime, like an old murder mystery. Yeah, oh, remember oh. that? Remember that uh, time you did the fucking thing and the, the whole shit? <laughs> remember that time you did the fucking thing and the whole shit? Detective Shane Goodman. You you mention him a lot. He's one of your top he is, detectives. He's just. Boots he, on the ground. Typically. Boots on the ground. Yeah. He works really hard um, at finding the underground stuff. Ah. I don't know. Ne- so, the, you know, this one's a couple days old, but it is great. And Aaron. Okay. Aaron, Aaron sent me this as well. Okay. On Instagram, he's just he's Aaron. Just Aaron. Yeah. And then he has like one of those handles that's like echinus 190 blah, yeah, yeah, blah, blah, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah, like i yeah, can't yeah, i don't yeah i can't but I, good job no i understand it sure so mary bill man accused of dipping testicles in customers salsa class c felony where at where is, what, what what restaurant do you know listen i feel like i know this guy but anyway the guy who did it just looking at him and he looks so you're looking at his picture and you feel like you know him yeah it's gonna be up okay but in the video show it's gonna be on the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. tennessee maybe huh we're i've at, maybe we're seen him maryville maryville huh so anyways he was jailed on felony charges after apparently dipping his testicles in a uh, customer's salsa so what happened was this low tipping customer uh-huh. Lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh orders through a delivery service called Dinner Dinner Delivered. Okay. So he's a passenger in the in the car. Yeah. So his friend drives for dinner delivered. Right. He gets in the car, he or she probably tells him this fucking lady left me 89 cents last time and I'm sure. fucking driving for a half an hour and he goes, "I'll show you." Dips his testicles in the lady's salsa. Uh, the problem is he made a video. All of this would have been fine, and I'm sure happens all the time. And you don't know about it, right? Right. I, you know, there's probably been a number of testicles dipped in uh, sauces that I've ordered. I, yeah. I, for I, various I've, reasons. I've dipped my testicles in someone's milk before and watched them drink it. Sorry? You did or you didn't? I did. I did do that. That's real. That's a real thing. And I can, I can describe that story in, in graphic detail, should you wish. I understand why one would be driven to the edge. Does, is there a motive for him, does it say? Well, his friend said that this person was 
low tipping. Oh, so low tipping was it. That was just it for him. That was it. Got and, it. Yeah. That's a pretty quick breaking point. Okay. Like, and the reason why I ask was it, was he a return customer? You know, customer was like, Must oh, fuck have this been. guy. Or maybe they know how much you're tipping them first. That's a tough one because usually you have don't. Been. I don't use Grubhub or anything like that. I haven't. So mm. I don't know if you tip first or Uber Eats or whatever. Right, 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 right. But it said that there was an 89 cent tip for a 30 minute drive. And then the video um, is him dipping, dipping his testicles in saying, I'll show, you know, this will show her. And he's saying, ooh, ooh, it feels good. Right, right. Right. Uh, where where is the Classy video? Where, felony. Where, yeah, where is the video? It was making the rounds on Facebook. Gotcha. But what? now it's in the hands of the police. Yeah. What 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 is a class C felony? Like how much time are you looking at for something like that? Is that a kind of a slap on the wrist and a fine? Because I mean, really, who got hurt? I guess is the well. When you fuck with food, people's food in that way, right? That's a big deal. Okay. You can kill people and shit. Yeah, I depending mean, depending on I, how you fuck with it, but they kind of all classify it in the same thing, you know, like right. in uh, the Rajneesh in the wild, wild country where they yeah, like yeah, put yeah. pink eye in all the fucking salad bars and yeah, shit. Yeah. And everyone's like fucking almost dying, get like E. coli and shit. Right, right, right. So I think they put it all in the same sort of category as is the thing. Whew. <laughs> I, then I, I could have gotten a, a class C felony. You know, 20 years ago. So what happened? Um, fraternity shit where I was getting hazed. And uh, the, the oddest thing, because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not down with like hazing and shit like that, right? Um, it's, it's just fucking ridiculous to me that you're, you're just going to get hazed and then automatically be friends with these people, sure. you know, seven days later or whatever, right? So there was a guy who was just a fucking asshole. Um, I'm not going to say his name because now that I know this is a class C felony, Jesus um, I don't know when the statute of limitations is up, but either way, ten years. Ago. He was like, "You fuck you, pledge. Go downstairs and get me a glass of milk." And we had this uh, kitchen downstairs, and I was like, "Cool, man." And they don't let you shower either, so you don't get you don't shower for a week um, or ten days or whatever it was. I forget. And um, so I was like, "Oh, I was on day four here without showering." And I was like, "You're gonna tell me to go fuck myself." Haze me all goddamn and day. Ask me for food from an food. From a... What? What? No, I I never let one pledge give me anything to eat ever. No. As they were going through, like no. So I went downstairs, and all my pledge brothers were down there at that point, and they were just like, "This is fucking bullshit. Fuck that guy." And I was like, "Exactly. I'm gonna fuck this guy." I pulled out my dick and balls and put them in a, a like a glass of milk, and I mean, let him sit there for a good like 15, 20 seconds. Why was he asking for a glass of milk? I, that's, that's another thing I couldn't get over. You're like, ew. Yeah. Man. So I went upstairs. And again, I hadn't showered like four days at this point. We get it, man. We yeah. heard you, yeah. Went upstairs, gave him a glass of milk, watched him drink d- down the entire thing. Sure. sure and I, sure, I, sure, I, that was the most, sure, sure. one of the most satisfying moments of my entire life. Yeah. 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 And, I, and to this day, because like he was older, I think like I was a freshman. You have like these fifth year seniors, you know, who are just about to graduate. They don't give a fuck about life. And, mm. and that's fine. Right. Uh, I'm, so I wasn't, I'm not really, I wasn't, I'm not friends with him to this day. I wasn't friends with him then really. Cause he was t- too old. You know, I know his, his full name because I've I put my entire dick and balls in his milk, his glass of milk. I know his full name. Yeah. And that's touching. Yeah. I could say it on there. Um, if I wanted to, oh, it's just, but I'm not right, going to right there. Oh. There's a couple things that make me <laughs> cringe. Like, that get me. Yeah. Um, and messing with people's food, either spit or things like that, ugh, like gets me so hard. And then getting cut underwater. Cut underwater. So oh, like, like if a you're coral? washing a dish and it gets, and you cut it on a glass. Right. In the water. Right. Or that's, anytime. That's real specific. It really is. But anytime like, like shark attacks are not so much the attack, but just that cut and flesh or whatever yeah, under yeah, yeah. the water yeah under any kind of water oof man and that's just me yeah that is that is you that's a but very thinking about spit in your food like 
semen in your food, I, shit like that. I'm just here's like, the thing, and, ooh, I, and, and I not know, knowing it. I, no, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. I know that it happens all the time. I'm ooh. sure. I'm sure it's happened to me. I don't want to know about it. So it's out of sight, out of mind to me. Like, I don't care. So I think if that guy would have just dipped his nuts in the lady's salsa and then moved on about his day and didn't post it. He needed the, he needed the street cred. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because otherwise, he walks out of that, you know, scot-free. And it happened and he can just live with that. But (laughs) I bet you a lot of people in the service industry were kind of on his side, so... I'm sure. So I I think that it's probably split. Yeah. The same people that are. I think the only movie that's done it justice, by the way, is probably Waiting. Yeah. Where it was just like, all right, cool. One of our best friends was in it. Um, I loved that movie. I was in the service industry at that time and everything. So you're just like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. And I've never spit in anyone's food, (laughs) fucked with anyone's food or whatever. But I'm sure the cooks have. Yeah, and I, I have like a, as a um, uh, as a waiter, like yeah, I have before for sure. I have not. People were assholes. I did. Um, and what I, I told you working at Papa John's in high school, like dude, I, there was a guy who was fucking the dough because it looked like the way it came out looked like tits, like silicon tits, mm-hmm. and like guy used to blast all over it. Um, I mean, dude, you see, I've seen it all. I'm mm-hmm. sure you have too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just don't want to know about it. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't care if my, if, if I order uh, a pizza from Domino's, I say, Hey, Papa John's. I hate the Papa. Sure. Obviously if I sure. order a pizza from Domino's, mm-hmm. if somebody jacked off on it or whatever, and I get the pizza and I don't know about it and I, and I enjoy the pizza and, and eat the entire thing and don't know. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. You win. You win. Yeah. I, I don't, but I don't need to know about it. Nothing happened to me. Right. Mm. That's why I only go to Papa Murphy's now. <laughs> right? We had okay. Papa Murphy's for the first time the other it was night. Good. It was. I was We've surprised. Talked shit. I, I We've just, talked shit. I don't understand their business model. There was a it's bunch just a of people in pizza, there. Bro, it's not frozen. It's not frozen, but I mean, you know, no, they're doing it's the uncooked. dough. It's, they're doing the dough. I understand, and but it's an uncooked pizza. It's uncooked, but you get to. Cook it to your specificity. T. Do you know? Yeah, you do. You do. It's not great. I enjoy. I'm, look, it's I, not great. It didn't blow my tits off. No, no. I understand. Um, I mean, either, but it was good enough where I was like, all right, cool. I, you know, I, I, I understand the small segment of people who s- like that. The thing of it, and I think that's why moms do it or whatever. We do it for our you know, little parties that we have is because we want to pick everything up first, right? Sure. So you want to like get the pizza, but you don't want to get it hot and then have it be cool, you know? Right, right. So there's there's certain elements that make sense, but you could also just get it delivered when you want it. Yeah, you can, you can. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is uh, Ocasio-Cortez. This fucking chick, dude, just keeps making headlines. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, she's got the big green new deal, um, (laughs) which, you know, you want to eliminate uh, gas emission cars or carbon emission, whatever whatever the fuck it is you're talking about, whatever bill of goods you're trying to sell me on this uh, big green new deal. Sure. It came out that all of her campaign, um, was, she was using fucking gas guzzling cars, uh, in New York. And it was just like, hey, you you said, oh, I took the train every day or whatever. No, she didn't take the fucking train she every day. She didn't take the train every day. You nope. can't. No. Not to do all the. Uh, well, I mean, look, she has a small. The district is small. I don't. What are you traveling to? Well, she's going. Yeah. yeah. So she did. She did take the train a little bit. <laughs> just a tiny little bit. Um, but but the, not the whole time. No, not the whole fucking time. So the New York Post today has a quote of her um, on, the, on the, the, the cover, which I still enjoy the New York, New York Post. Like, sure. It's entertaining. It's well done still. They haven't gone the New York Times route yet. Uh, yeah. They kind of call it both ways. Um, <laughs> but it said, hey, man, I'm just living in the world. That's what she said. Huh? I'm sorry. 
you want to change the world and shame the world, just like Al Gore and his fucking bullshit. Remember Al Gore and his full fucking climate change, but he, what, he had set the record for like most private jet flights for the year or something for that. We were just like. You need gas to get your message out about not using it. Do you know what I'm saying though? Yeah. And she's How like. How else is he supposed to get around? So he, here is her, her, her latest tweet in, in regards to this New York Post article this morning. I also fly and I use AC. Living in the world as it is isn't an argument against working towards a better future. It is if that's what you're campaigning on. And, you know, I, there is no reason you couldn't have taken a Prius to all of your events or Absolutely. a Tesla or. Absolutely. You know, it would have been fine. You didn't have to take fucking gas guzzling Ubers and all of this shit like. Or big sprinters or something. Yeah. So you could have very well taken, you know, electric cars. Like if Ed Bagley tells me to go solar or whatever, I'm like, okay, like he does. He either rides his bike or takes the Prius. You know what I mean? Like right. he lives this shit. She can't. So the, the, the campaign now had to, rep- I guess you have to report what you do with all this shit, which is interesting. It says the campaign logs 1,049 car service transactions totaling over $23,000 between May 16th, 2017 and December 31st, 2018. Her campaign once booked 26 car service transactions in one single day. Do you know how many carbon footprints that's leaving? One big 26 inch. And it says, so the article goes on to say, even though her queen's headquarters was just a one minute walk to the seven train, her campaign made only 52 Metro card purchases, spending about eight grand. Despite Mm -hmm. the the, the high speed rail, because that was one of her things, being the cornerstone of of the green strategy of like, we need these high speed railways or whatever. Uh, She took the, the, the Amtrak only 18 times compared to 66 airline transactions. So, I, you know, I think it's, in theory, great to tell everybody what to do. But when it actually comes to doing it yourself and you can't do it, just shut the fuck up about it. Like, I, I think we're all done with that. It's like Spielberg. Yeah. You're not going to change. If you're not going to change it. You're not. No. Uh, so get, get fucked on this, this whole thing. Um the other one that I, I found curious is like, you know, I always look, I always bitch about these celebrities on Twitter all, all the time, bitching about Trump and being rich and all this other shit. And some guy went after Don Cheadle uh, yesterday and I, I found it really interesting. And it wasn't, it wasn't anybody famous. Like he didn't have a blue check mark or anything like mm-hmm. that. And he just said, I'm so fucking sick of millionaires bitching about other millionaires telling them, to give more to impoverished people like what was he doing what was he asking he was was some trump thing or just like you know you're you're going after he's like oh you're rich or whatever and it's like i i I felt the same exact way where it's like hey man i I don't understand and like because everybody retweeted this guy and all this shit and they were like you're right and that's all that that's all that all of this feels like is millionaires talking about fucking telling other millionaires what they shouldn't be doing to help fucking poor people when they're not actually doing it themselves. Mm-hmm. I don't get that. And this is why I enjoy listening to like Rogan or other people regarding like politics or celebrity or things like that, rather than these actual fucking bullshit liberal celebrities where I can listen to Rogan and say, you know, Rogan will tell you, you know, he's rich and fucking he doesn't have the same problems as everybody else. And it's yeah. like, fuck, if I get that kind of rich, very goddamn well, the first thing I'm doing is getting private jets, man. I'm like, I'm telling yeah. you that right now. Yeah. And I'm not going to bitch about it to anybody else and tell them to go green. Fuck no. Yeah. I want a private jet. I want to, I want to beat commercial. That's what I want to do. Right. It's the people that, and like Cheeto, man, like I love, he's a great actor fucking great actor and by all accounts a a pretty goddamn good human being Mm -hmm. but again man don't let your agenda get in the way of what you actually do in your real life like these guys are on private jets all the time and it is amazing just say hey man 
My life's amazing. Make your own fucking choices. That's what we do on this show. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. Uh, I'm going to tell you who I like and right. why. That's it. I, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I don't live your fucking life. Yeah. I don't know how much you, you to... make. I, yeah. yeah we, we have 1.6 million listeners. I, I'm not going to, I, I have no idea what you guys go through on a day-to-day basis or how you live. I'm, I'm giving you, a, what, an hour and a half of free entertainment a day. Uh, if you're listening to Drinking Bros, three hours. Congratulations. That's about as far as I'm taking it. Like, Vote for who you want. Make your own goddamn life decisions. Um, yeah, I don't tell you to give any money to charity because I don't know how much <laughs> yeah. you have, dude. Why <laughs> or, do you have to give money to fucking charity? Or and if then, the money's really going to the actual charity itself. We don't know that. that. Shit, and then, you know, yeah. I don't tell you to follow your dreams. No. I don't tell you to do anything <laughs> more than what you need to do to get through the day for yourself, right? Right. Right. And if you have the time and money to try and go green a little bit, go Great. ahead. Great. Give it By a the go. way, it's not going to make any fucking difference. <laughs> it's not going to make a difference. <laughs> Even Ocasio can't fucking do it. No. Okay? No. It's almost impossible to do it. it if you want to be Ed Bagley, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. But he can't make it to fucking meetings and, and auditions because he's got to take the bike or the Prius. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, or I think just the bike. Something where, I don't know. If you really want to live it, <laughs> it's going to be a rough go, a rough go. Do what you have to do to get through your day. That's what I say. That's what I say. So we're not going to tell you who to vote for or, or preach in your face about being green or whatever. I have no fucking idea and what those you're doing. Light man. bulbs. How do those light bulbs do anything? <laughs> the the tur the cur- curly ones. <laughs> you know how everyone feels like I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it. How does that help? How? I actually don't know how that helps. We use so much light in this studio. We have to wear makeup, both of us, every day for the video show. And I, none of these are carbon safe. And I don't no, care. No, and they've lasted for such a long time. Yeah. And I just don't know. We leave them on all day long. So yeah. I feel good about it. Uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we? We shall. Uh, this is going out to uh, lead singer of uh, Prodigy, Keith, Keith Flint. Uh, Smack my bitch up? Yeah. Uh, he uh, died. Found dead. He, he killed himself. And to me, like, this, this band in particular was revolutionary, where I remember hearing them for the first time during the, like, the Smack My Bitch Up era, which, uh, I, like, I thought it was a hilarious, like, maybe it was a joke against society. I don't know if you thought the same thing when that, that song came out. No, I, it was, I cringe only because we really liked it in a real, real, in a real way. Right. But I couldn't, here's the deal. I couldn't tell if it was a joke or not, where it was just like, Hey man, I'm just going to make this fucking song and and called smack my bitch up. See what, (laughs) see what happens, you know? Uh, Um, so it was one of those bands where I was like, all right, cool. So I kind of dismissed that. All right. Is it called smack my bitch? It is literally called smack my bitch up. Um, so I kind of dismissed it after that. And then the, remember the fire starter song came out, Chaves? Yes. I am and, the fire starter. Uh, I am the fire something, starter. Something, something fire starter. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's him. That, that's <laughs> them. And then there was a song called, look, they have a bunch of hits, right? Yeah. There's a song called breathe. That was my fucking jam, dude. And it was one of those bands where, I, dude, you play the opening 10 seconds to breathe. Yeah. You know exactly what the fuck song that is. And you're like, holy shit, I can, I, I feel like I can go run through a goddamn wall. What I enjoyed about The Prodigy was with Smack My Bitch Up, I thought it was a joke, a joke band, maybe something like I didn't, you know. And then the rest of the music started coming out, and I was like, what is this? What is it? Because it's not metal, it, it, it's not punk. It, like, it almost felt like techno in, in a sense. Like, they combined like four different categories of music into one, and I was like, shit. Did you just get, uh, what was that? I just get jolted there. No, oh, because my phone almost fell off my lap. Um, but it was it was one of those bands that I, I don't know what category you would put them in. I don't know if you would put them as as metal or techno or house or I don't know what the fuck they were. Remember Rammstein? Yeah, it was kind of like that sort of that type of jam. But like they were to me them and maybe like Nine Inch Nails. But I, I think 
Nine Inch Nails was more metal, kind of veered into this new era of of this music. And dude, Prodigy was dope, man. I, I'm serious. Go back and listen Change, to their catalog. Go back or go look up the lyrics to smack my bitch up. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I remember. Change my pitch up. Smack my bitch up. Yeah. Change my pitch up. Smack my bitch up. And again. Change my pitch up. Smack my bitch up. Thought it was a joke. Change my pitch up. Smack my bitch up. Yep. Ay, ay, hey, ay, 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 ay. So you're, uh, you're going, you're going all in against them. This was, I'm going to play you fucking, fuck you, dude. I'm going to play you. I'm gonna Should play I it. just play it at the end? What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. Play, play are, breathe. But like, you? you know this. I mean, this you still, when turn this comes up, on, I, this is as loud as it'll oh. go, I think. What was it in? Was it in a movie? Yes. There have been in a million movies, TV shows, whatever. Hollywood used to use Prodigy songs for fucking everything. For There was a good like five year stretch where like, this was in every trailer, every fucking... I mean, there right. was always a Prodigy song. Always in all of this shit. And, like, I didn't know what they were. I just I couldn't figure this band out, but I dug them. Um, and uh, Homeboy offed himself. 49. 49 years old. Put... I tell you what. How put, did he do... We can't... We, we won't be able to put this for the video show on YouTube. Put, no. Put Breathe by Prodigy at the end of this show on the audio version. And then... Crank this in your fucking vehicle if you're going to work. And tell me that doesn't want to make you punch your, your boss right in the dick and say, you know what? I'm taking an extra hour on lunch today. It's very like run, Lola, run, right? Yeah. Do they use it in that? Maybe. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Here's Breathe by Prodigy. The Prodigy. Play it, Jabes. Good night. <laughs>